I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about they played with your heart, and now they are experiencing the consequences of their own actions. You know, one of the things that I see is sometimes you'll see an immature ex, somebody that hasn't really grown up yet, that, you know, they're still kind of young at heart. They don't understand consequences to their decisions or how their behavior really impacts other people. And so sometimes you'll see an ex who acts really immature in a relationship and they play games. You know, they do things with your heart that gets you to feel close to them and connected and then they pull away. And if you're in a situation like that, you really need to make that person feel the consequences of their own actions, okay? When you're in a situation where somebody is repeatedly hurting you, disappointing you, doing things that are just immature or selfish, you have to protect yourself. I know it's tough when you love somebody and you care about them, but you have to love and respect yourself more. Now, that's where healing your attachment issues come in. Okay, this is why we're always talking about healing your attachment style and getting to a confident place. Because when you do that, you're a lot less likely to tolerate somebody who's mistreating you for a lot of different reasons, right? So if you dated somebody that toyed with your feelings and then they come back, which I'm going to talk about today, it can kind of feel like karma, right? It feels almost like justice to see that somebody that you've really loved and treated well and taken care of and they're hurting because they neglected you or they took you for granted, it feels nice. It feels nice because then it feels like, okay, at least they're suffering over me too, right? Like it, it feels nice to know that they care enough that they would be hurting. It's harder when you feel like somebody doesn't even hurt as well. If you're hurting and they're not hurting, it's not a good feeling. But when you at least see that they're hurting or they start to regret their decision, it makes you feel a lot better about how you saw that person. And I know that a lot of people want to make their ex regret their decision. They want to make their ex regret leaving them. And I get that. I have felt that feeling too. But in order to get to that place where they will regret it, first of all, you have to leave them alone because they're not going to fear losing you when you're reaching out. It's as simple as that. But the other major thing you have to do is you have to level up. You have to work on your attachment issues. All of those things that you struggled with in the relationship, you want to get better at those things. That's why the people that are doing the workbooks and the creative healing course are getting to a place where they work through their stuff. They're not getting triggered the way they did. They're showing the ability to be a better partner, to communicate better and the confidence that is extremely attractive. And I hear this time and time again from exes that come back when they see that you are acting or mature and that you've kind of leveled up in your life, however that may be, they really regret it, right? Now they're like, oh my gosh, this version of you, like I can't even believe who you've become and they want that. So it really does pay off. But if you're in a situation where you're just watching no contact videos, you're not really going to grow. Those aren't really going to give you the skills to level up, to make you more confident, to meet new people or to date people that might be a better fit for you. So you got to work on yourself. Okay. And it feels good. Trust me. It does feel good to really work on your issues. So today I've got a really good email coaching from somebody that was neglecting their partner, right? That was playing with their heart and their feelings and not really prioritizing them and it comes back to get them. Okay. So let me get into this email. You'll like this one. 
They said, hi, Coach Craig. I wanted to do an email coaching follow-up with you from our call. We did a call a while back. As you remember, we did a call in fall of last year. I have not reached out to my ex since we last talked. I still work on the creative healing course all the time, and I've never felt so confident within myself. And that is exactly why we designed it, because you really work through those issues. It's very therapeutic. The, the, the creative healing course has a lot of art therapy activities, many of them surrounding breakups and healing through that breakups, because a lot of what happens with, with us is in our unconscious. But when you're doing the art therapy activities, it really helps you tap into healing that unconscious. Okay. My ex and I started dating when we were only about 22 years old. We had an amazing first year and a half together. Everything just felt right. We had talked about moving in together and a future. We were both in college and life was good. However, around a year and a half into the relationship, he moved in with some friends of his. That's where everything changed. His roommates were not a good influence on him. How many of you are in a situation where you have people influencing your ex in a negative way? It happens all the time. We don't live in a bubble. They all were single and wanted to party. They wanted to go out all the time and hook up with randoms. Well, think about it. He's a young guy. He's in his early 20s. And this is the first time he's out on his own. He's hanging out with his buddies, his friends, his roommates. They want to hook up with different girls. They want to party, do all these things. It's going to get to him. It's going to influence him. At first, I tried to include myself into his friends group. But it didn't take me long to realize they wanted to hang out as single guys. Basically, they didn't want any girlfriends around which felt immature and disrespectful. I wasn't going to try and ruin anyone's fun, but it felt like that's how they saw me. Well, they were probably giving off that vibe, like, oh man, why'd you bring her? They, they, maybe they felt like they couldn't be themselves. Maybe they were talking to girls and they wanted to talk to other girls. Who knows what's going on there, but it felt uncomfortable for her. And they were obviously making her feel a way that she shouldn't be there. And that's an uncomfortable feeling. He had two friends in particular who seemed to have no respect for women. I could see how they were influencing him and slowly he became more dismissive of me, minimizing how I felt. He'd say, oh, we're just going to play pool for a few hours. Don't make such a big deal about it. Which would have been fine, but he would sometimes do that on days where we had set plans. Well, that makes a big difference, right? When you have plans with somebody, you're excited to see them, you've planned your day, you know, you're getting ready for things, you're hyped up for whatever you're gonna do, and then they cancel to hang out with the boys. To do that on a consistent basis, it shows you that he's not really valuing the relationship, right? Because if he was, he would say, listen guys, I have plans with my girl tonight, we're going out, I'll hang out with you another night. But, you know, part of it is probably that he's young and he's living with his friends, roommates for the first time. He would disappear for hours when I knew he was free. Towards the end, he would take a few days to reply to a text. Yet he was posting himself out partying and drinking on Instagram. So it's getting worse. Instead of... Replying to her, he's out partying and posting about it and then doesn't respond to her for a couple days. You know that's just going to make somebody more upset, angry, hurt, not feel cared about. As the months went by, we just got more and more distant. I wasn't feeling prioritized, but I didn't want to control him. We'd see each other, but it became awkward, awkward when I went to his place. So I stopped going. I felt unwanted over there, particularly with one of his friends who was rude to just about everyone. He just make excuses for him because he had a, a lot of messed up stuff going on with his life. 
but he was drinking, partying, staying out late. I don't know if he ever cheated, but I do think he had women he was talking to. So he's walking that line. We don't know if he actually cheated, but he's definitely putting himself in a position where he's not prioritizing her or this relationship. I was getting fed up and started standing up for myself and told him that I deserved more respect. Eventually, he said he didn't think it was working. He said that he doesn't think that he can give me what I needed, that he thought something is missing, but I did nothing wrong, that he wasn't ready for a relationship and wanted to live his life no strings attached. Well, that tends to be somebody who's younger, immature, and just not ready for all the commitment, obligations, responsibilities that come with a relationship. Shortly after that is when I did my call with you. We talked about his friends and you really helped me see what was going on in their house. I felt so much better after we talked because I knew I had to respect myself. You really reassured me that it wasn't my fault. I had been blaming myself and thinking I wasn't patient enough. I did your CH course every day, the creative healing course, and everything started clicking. I was going strong. I got a new job, have spent more time enjoying hobbies and life. Things were feeling much better. I got to the point where I didn't care if he came back or not. What do I tell you guys? When you're focused on that, that's the best place to be. When you're not obsessing about where they're at and what they're doing, when you're actually doing the work like she did, getting to a place where she's confident and okay with however life goes. I just wanted to be happy, but somehow I knew he'd come back. We were in no contact for months. Then a few months ago, he started coming back into the picture. What do I tell you guys? Happens all the time. Exes do regret their decision, but you have to get ready. And if you're just sitting around watching no contact videos, trying to handle that, you're not really leveling up and taking advantage of no contact in the time that you have apart to really blow this person away. He did an indirect direct approach, just like you thought he would do. He texted me a picture with his mom and said she was asking about me and missed me which I'm sure was true because he was doing much better with me than when he was single. He said that he wanted to apologize to me about how things went and asked if we could meet. I told him I would need a few weeks to think about things and to give me a call then. I wanted to make sure he was serious and figured he deserved to suffer a bit for what he had done. Well, you know, she's making them work. And I tell you guys, make the person work to get you back, right? Like, don't be eager. You don't want to be eager or desperate. It just makes you look less valuable, right? If you're desperate, especially when the situation like this, where she was good to him and he took her for granted, right? I mean, when you're in a situation like that, you really got to make that person show you that they deserve you. Make them fight for you. We went to a bar and sat outside. I had my guard up. He said he was so sorry for being influenced by his friends. The one who had the most influence wound up with a DUI and got into a few fights with their friend group. He said he had been miserable for a while and then he knew that karma, oh, it was karma for the pain he had caused me. Not everybody believes in karma. Some people do, some people don't. I will tell you though, I probably mentioned this over the years here and there, that the Applebee's girl did send me a text message that was kind of like an indirect direct that had mentioned karma and feeling that she got karma for what she had done. So it felt nice at the time. Obviously I didn't understand it because it was so long ago and I didn't really understand breakups back then. It felt like divine justice that he was feeling the weight and the pain that he caused me. 
He surprisingly admitted that he threw away our relationship for selfish reasons and that he wasn't mature enough to understand what love truly meant. He told me that he knew he lost an incredible person with a heart of gold. I asked him what he wanted, if he just wanted to apologize, which I admit really felt good to hear. Yeah, I mean, if you have an ex apologizing to you like that, it feels good, okay? Because it shows that you cared about somebody and they cared about you back. And even if you don't wind up back together, that they did care or they do care. And that's a nice feeling. Some people don't care about that. But for me, it feels good. He said he didn't think he deserved a second chance. That every day he feels guilty about everything and regrets the heartbreak he caused me. Honestly, I was surprised by how much he had been hurting. But he did kind of say what you say to us. That at first he didn't feel anything until he thought I was gone for good. You see what I mentioned earlier in the video. I told him I wanted time to think about everything and that I want him to be able to express exactly what he wants and what will be different if we get back together. See, you can tell she's doing the creative healing course because she's got the insight to ask questions like that, which are questions like that that you would see in the course where it really gets you to reflect on what will be different. I'm stronger now and I'm not going to be mistreated when I give my kindness or have my loyalty disregarded for selfish immaturity. He moved out from his friend's place temporarily back home, but he has been saving money and finishing his degree. We have had several long talks where he talked about how he let others influence his decision and how he treated me. He has been acknowledging the pain that he inflicted and showing genuine remorse. I know he was acting immature and selfish, but he did seem to realize this and cut off friends that aren't mature or have direction in life. And one of the things you have to consider is who the person is friends with and, you know, spending their time with because they will have an influence on people. You have to think about it. Think about your friends. They're influencing you. So it's going to happen to your partner too. And that group was just so immature. They just want to go out and party and live a kind of single lifestyle, which is fine if you want to do that, but don't hurt people along the way. Don't lead people on or don't be in a relationship if you can't really commit to them. When we first started dating, I thought he was so thoughtful and had good morals and character. I think being out on his own and just wanting to fit in with his friends turn him, to, turn him into someone he isn't. Do you think I can ever trust him again? Is it possible to make it work? especially knowing how much he had hurt me. Well, it's too soon to say. There are some good things here. Obviously, we don't like the way he handled things in the relationship. You had a good amount of time before it fell apart, but then he kind of went wild. Now, it doesn't sound like he cheated, but he was probably at least flirting with the idea of other women. And that's, I'm sure, part of the reason why he wanted to walk away. But we're seeing some good signs here. And I'd be looking for, is he regretting things and showing genuine remorse? You know, the time that he's had away from you to reflect on his actions and knowing that, you know, he can't do undo what he did to you, but he can you know, show you in the present and the future that things will be better. You know, what is his idea of a future for you, with you? What is he thinking? You guys are both young and, you know, now would be a good time to reevaluate what he's wanting long term and if it lines up with what you want. It seems like his, ap his apologizing is sincere. And only you know, uh, but if you are seeing that he is showing genuine, sincere remorse and patience, that's a good sign, right? That he's understanding of what he did to you 
and that he's not pressuring you. That's a nice sign that he's maturing here. And it does, it did sound like maybe he had a mom that was more mature and saw that she was a good girl and, you know, liked her. And so mom's probably like, you better get it together. I could feel like mom is probably like, you better get your act together because you got a good girl here and you're going to mess it up. So I bet there's some of that going on there. Um, you know, is he learning from his past mistakes and growing up? It seems like it, right? He, he did cut off the friends that were immature and now he's spending time with friends that have more direction in life and goal oriented. So that's a good sign. Um, but you want to make informed decisions, right? You take the information that you get a little bit at a time and you see if he's consistent, see if he's showing genuine concern and really investing you in the relationship again. You know, you don't need to rush to forgive him or necessarily hold on to a grudge either. You know, there are different places that we are in our life for everybody. And when you're, you know, 23-ish or 24 around, I guess he's around that age now, you know, not everybody is mature at that age, especially guys. Guys tend to be more immature until they get closer to 30, right? So that's why I'm saying reevaluate. Where do you see this going? Do you line up for a long-term future together? Is that what you really want? Um, we see some positive signs here, but make sure you get as much of the story as to what was going on as you can. If he did lie, if he did cheat, I'd want to know. I mean, you don't have to force it and get aggressive about it, but I'd say, look, you know, if we're trying to turn this around, I really need to know everything now. Because if it comes out later, it's going to be a big problem. I'd rather know now what happened so we can deal with it and see if we can turn this around rather than it comes out in a year or six months or whenever, and then we're going to have a big problem and I'm not going to be as likely to forgive you. So take things slow, see how it goes. Uh, it does sound like he's really hurting over what he did to you and that his actions are really coming back to him. He's getting the karma that so many people get after a breakup and taking somebody for granted. But take it slow, you know? You wanna see that this lines up and works for you, not just you know, because he wants it, make sure it's what you want as well. Okay. So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. Of course, if you want to get my help personally, you could get it on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You could get the creative healing course and the workbooks there, but that's it for this video. I'm coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.